Three, two, one, action. Welcome, Houston, to the Shades of Grey podcast. I'm your lovely host, Monique Hogard, and this is The Real Real Estate, where we are about to get real, and you're going to hear some real shit today. So, I would like to introduce two of my lovely co-hosts today. I have Robert Fleming, and I have Harry Jean-Baptiste. We'll kind of talk a little bit about some of the challenges we face, some of the obstacles we go through in this industry. So, would you like to start off and introduce yourself? Of course. Uh, my name is Robert Fleming Jr. I'm a big down name Cone Pros, and I've been in the business for six years now. Awesome. So, can you tell us about, we want the real scoop. We want to know... What in this industry, how many years have you been in the business? Six. Okay, Six. and how, what have you felt has been challenging these, in these six years? And, and this can include a work-life balance. We know, you know, when we start in the real estate game, we're all trying to build our brand, build our business. And sometimes things get neglected in certain areas of our lives. Have you had any of those issues, whether it's, work-life balance or, you know, overcoming any obstacles, embracing innovation, you know, trying to be creative in this industry? Uh, yeah, so, I mean, the first thing is work-life balance. So, um, I started, and I'm still, I'm, I'm a dual agent uh, right now at the moment. Um, so, I'm balancing being a full-time teacher, educator, coach on one end, and being still a full-time real estate professional. Um, so kind of going through taking care of my clients, also take care of my, my, my full time on this other one. So it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's been a challenge, but it, I feel like I've done it successfully over these past six years. Um, just making sure to put people first, really make sure my clients know that they come first and whatever, um, diversion I need to make from work to, to make sure they take care of, I make sure they handle that. Awesome. Uh, so that's, that's primarily just that work, work. Work balance, like right. type right. So. Awesome. Now, trying to be creative and staying on top of the game, you know, trying to make sure that we can either get listings or secure buyers. What have you felt has worked for you? Um, I primarily have been working with a lot of buyers. Mm-hmm. I've, I've had a lot of uh, a good amount of listings, but buyers have been it, especially with my just fair influence mm-hmm. working with first time home buyers. Um, that's been more of my niche. Okay. I'm just working with working with buyers just because of who I know. Right. And that's what we were taught in the game. Start with your circle of influence, right? Yeah. <laughs> so what about adapting to the market dynamics now with this whole NAR, HAR lawsuit going on? We're going to have to find another way to be creative to stay on top of the, the game. Like, what, what do you, are you doing anything different? You know, what, what would you say? from or to a new agent coming in now that we know what's about to happen if they were to say hey Robert you know I heard you know I heard that y'all are going to be dealing with these things if I want to join and come into the brokerage like what should I expect or you know what what am I going to be faced with I think experience is going to be key and I think getting with another experienced realtor and kind of learning from them how to kind of navigate the space is its best. Because right. I, I don't I don't anticipate a huge change on my end. I'm still going to be working my clients with my referrals. Uh, I just don't see the world ending on my real estate end. Right. You know what I mean? So um, I think someone coming in, get with an experienced person, learn the roles, uh, constantly stay in the know, you know, listen to many podcasts, watch as many videos as you can. And just uh, stay stay grounded in the real estate so that you feel comfortable navigating through these these different tough waters. Awesome. So, have you experienced any craziness? Is there a story that you can share within your six years, whether it's on the buyer side, seller side, investor side? Any you know? Because a lot of times when we hear, when we talk, when we watch podcasts and we see these shows, nobody talks about these things. So what can you share with the audience, you know, something that has happened to you or with your client? It could be a transaction, you know, just something out off that we would never think or imagine really happens in this business. Yeah. I mean, so if you're not having issues, then you're probably not doing real estate, right? Um, So I've, I've had several issues. I think the main consensus is a lot of it may not be your fault which is something you kind of, in a sense, got to get over. 
Um, you got to be grounded and know what you know and how to handle how to handle situations. Um, so some things may not be your fault. Maybe on the vendor side, maybe on the uh, seller side, uh, buyer side, whatever it is. But just kind of navigating those things and just making the deal work. At the end, is is kind of our job at the end of the day, really. Right. Uh, but I know one of my. Um, uh, I guess in my eyes, crazy is just because I'm just like, what's mm-hmm. going on? What's uh, just it happened with wire fraud um, with a, a buyer. Um, he he was with a uh, with an agent. I was I mean he was with a company. I was a rent to own company, um, and that company would buy the house. They were renting back to the to the buyer, the end buyer. Uh, but it seems like at the end of the day, the buyer I was working with, well, I was mainly. I was on the selling side, mm-hmm. but I was more double in the deal uh, because I was really taking care of the seller. But then the the buyer that rents their own company, they they don't have an agent, so they just come kind of um, to you. So I was double in the deal, and it turns out that their end buyer seems like he was doing fraud on, on that end. Oh. So he made it seem like he was sending off a check, but it was wire fraud when it really wasn't. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, so it got to the point where we were days away from closing. He said he wired some money. Money wasn't received. Title company's waiting. I'm telling my sons, I don't know what's going on. And it's just like, I don't know what to do in this instance. Like, you know, how do we navigate this this water? Um, and he seemed concerned at first and initially, but then eventually he wasn't as concerned. And when we kind of did some more investigating, it seemed like he was the one that kind of tried to get something out of the deal. And I don't know how he would have but at the end of the day, it really frustrated my clients. They thought they were getting one deal, and it's like, no, we got to start over from 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 scratch. So, oh um, so it was a, a headache on that end. But all in all, we got the home sold, took care of my clients. Uh, but it was just kind of weird and, and and just different at that time. So. Okay. Well, that's a lot. See, these are some things that we just don't even hear about, and. We have a form that we have to sign or, or share with our client, and it is that lovely wire fraud form, simply for a reason like this, just to let people know that, you know, those type of things can happen when we least expect them. So, that I know, so, you know, sometimes you have shady buyers, sometimes you have shady sellers. It's part of the business, right? Yeah. So, my next guest is Mr. Harry. Who you want to introduce yourself, who you're with? Sure. Hi, my name is Harry Jean Baptiste. I'm with EXP Realty. I've been in the business for seven years now. All right. And Harry is dear to my heart. He's one of my really good friends. And, you know, I do seek to, you know, get his advice on things. And he's going to soon be my new co host. So I'm super excited about that. <laughs> Uh, we both are in the Caribbean uh, space, so, you know, big things on both sides. So um, it's a great, um, you know, building relationship uh, with him. So now with real estate, what would you say, you know, coming into the business, you've been in the business for seven years. Right. How do you feel like you've adapted to the different market dynamics? You know, the market's always changing. There's always periods of uncertainty. How do you handle that? Uh, that's a loaded question there. <laughs> um, yeah, seven years. I was like, people look at my face like, you don't even look like you're like barely 20 years old. But I mean, in my, I guess my career, it's just been like, it's weird because what's said in the news isn't usually what we're going through. It just always seems like until this whole NAR thing, which I'll tap later, it just so it seems like you're selling, 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 and then out the blue, the leads stop coming in. You got listings with no showings. And it's like, oh, it's because it's been raining for five days or seven days. So I just sometimes feel like the news doesn't even correlate with what you want. Right. Um, what's helped me is that they're problem solvers at the end of the day. So the biggest thing is that what I've had to learn, I've had to solve my pride throw my feelings in the trash because at the end of the day it's like we don't get paid until we close so we don't run into the closing line I mean I'm, it's so hard for me to pick a story because I've seen all sorts of things from racist threats to <laughs> there was one buyer that did something crazy with the ex-spouse and then try to 
commit seller fraud. So, all, all sorts of things. Well, what do you? How do you feel being in real estate? Do you feel like it's challenging to have a work-life balance, especially when you're doing this full time? And I ask this question because I, you know, and I'll get into that when it's my turn. But I feel like with real estate. If you're not dating somebody or married to somebody in the in the game, they really don't understand what we go through. You have to actually be in it to understand. I don't know if you've experienced that or, you know, I feel like that's a question that a lot of us, not even just us, but, you know, a lot of realtors we get just in general. But a lot of people that they may be dating, and I've just heard stories talking to other friends of mine that are in real estate, that it's challenging. Yeah, I mean, I'm... I, it sounds like you're in favor to meet someone that is in real estate. I'm a little bit different on that stance. I've tried it. And, you know, that old saying when you mix business and pleasure, like, he had the, my advice would be like, he had to know that it's something for certain, not for some fling, because, you know, you have no fling with this one. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, oh, it don't work no more. Now you gotta, you know, back in the days when we used to be, you know, Break in order, you gotta right. face that person. Now you gotta be like, Oh, I gotta duck you now because you know, we used to got a real estate van or something like right. that. Right, okay, and you smash you back in the day. Now we're not smashing, I don't want to see you no more. Right, so I'm a little bit different. I mean, I had a situation a while back, she wasn't necessarily a realtor, but she was a vendor, we'll say that. And we had some relations that didn't pan out. Right. And so now when I need services, I can't go back and call for you because it's like, I hate you. I don't ever want to see you again. And we know, despite what happened with NAR, really, like you said, I mean, business owners with the same service. So at a minimum, we're going to need another agent. We're going to need someone else. Because I'm running into situations where I'm meeting that type of vendor. I don't want to say what it is because someone watches like, no, exactly what you're talking about. Right. So, That's true. You know. And I guess from, I guess you have to look at it too from an ethical standpoint. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say mixing business with pleasure. I'm just saying, and it doesn't have to even be somebody currently. You know what I mean? But just somebody that's been in the industry that, right. you know, it could have been a title partner, could have been a lender, yeah. like or it could have been a, a realtor prior. Just maybe they changed careers. But someone that understands our dynamic and the challenge that, you know, this is a hustle business. Yeah. Like, we don't, we eat, sleep. When they say eat, sleep, and breathe real estate, <laughs> it's real. Yeah. That's what we have to do. I don't go to sleep until 3 or 4 o'clock at night, and I'm... And I'm, I'm still wondering, like, what did I do? What yeah. did I get done? So, yes. But. And I, to add to that, since you're a company, just for a second, yeah. it's like, you know, and I've, I've no other people in relationships, and it's tough. And I mean, that's one of the reasons, I guess, to be personal and open help. With my relationships, I mean, I want to get to a point where I'm starting to do, I want to get out of active real estate. I love it. Don't get me wrong, but. And this is just my school of thought, so I'm not just going to explain her down at the bottom and say, like, this is Harry's opinion, don't kill him. Right. But my thing is, like, if you're going to actively do real estate and successfully raise a family or be in a relationship, it's really hard. Now, I know some couples that do it, but there's always a yin and yang because usually what happens kind of, I guess, what you're running into in your life and I don't want to put all these business out there because they can you know the watch it's like oh let me slide in your DMs and see how we're doing <laughs> I mean we could drop the we could drop our IG you know <laughs> and then she's going like you want to buy a house but right. <laughs> you know it's usually a nine to fiver mm-hmm. it gets with the entrepreneur and the nine to fiver gets not well you're never here because the nine to fiver once five is done That's you're it. done but real estate, and I mean, there's limits. There's there's guidances you can do. I mean, I try not to, unless it's like an you know, like emergency. I've learned that in the business. You call me a midnight club, not a big emergency. Like, I can't execute a contract at midnight. I can't do hardly anything. Now, if you want to kind of complain a lot of times, we all know in real estate, we're really just professional babysitters. It's going to be okay. Right. If you're a buyer, the first time buyer, I don't know what I'm doing. It's going to be all right. The inspection report looks like a pistol. She's going to be okay. <laughs> a seller is like, oh, I want my money. Now I want to move to Florida. I, I, you know, just to kind of mix it up, I guess, make right. like a free form. You know, I had one 
where the title company got stuff was in the buyer's part, the sales part. I'm on the sales side. This was a referral I got from a friend that used this title company. It was a complete disaster. You know, the the mother's disabled. She literally just sits in the living room. She's like, I want to go to Florida. And you like you said, the Caribbean ties, so they give more inspiration to that. So I'm Asian American, so I'm my Asian sock passe not moving, right? And uh I'll be the strip of daddy and so this was a Haitian family, they're like so I'm having to translate everything. And so I'm like, yeah, the clothes are not gonna be late. Ladies crying, bawling in the living room. And she's like, I wanna move to Florida. You're keeping me from moving to Florida. Headed. Because I'm more calm natured. Like, it's okay. It's gonna be all right. We're gonna do it. We had to push back the clothes in like four, five. Because the title company couldn't get the paperwork together, couldn't do this. But we eventually got them to Florida. But I had to be there. The wall when I got movers coming in thinking the house closed right. and you're just like the buyer's mad because it's like I already sent my money what do you mean I can't get my keys and then I have to coordinate the other closing for them in Florida too and so now you've gone through all that stress and it's tough especially if you're single in this business because it's like who do you connect with after you've gone through all that stress and then you go vent to that nine to five and like what are you talking about my manager all we do is this chat to people all day and start gossiping. We're gonna go the We're gonna go, you know, they're gonna go happy hour at five. Yeah. And at five, you're stuck on Bellway 8. Right. Trying to get to your next point. Exactly. So, yeah, I mean, it's a lot, it's, it's, it's a lot that we experience and a lot that we go through. I tell people all the time, they just see us showing them the house, going to the inspection, they don't know the hoops and the hurdles that we have to go through on the back end to make sure that we can get to that clothing table. Sometimes we don't even get to the clothing table. So, you know, being able to have a positive outlook and bounce back, you know, it's sometimes it's, it's challenging, but at the same time, once we get over that obstacle, it is rewarding. So me, Monique, I've been a realtor for three years. I started off full time. Uh, I'm sorry, part-time, and now I'm doing it full-time. I did have a full-time job, so I knew exactly what you're experiencing. It's tough. And, you know, people have always told me, you got to do it. You got to do it full-time. You got to do it full-time. I'm like, no, I want my consistent checks coming in. Right. You know, but now I see that I'm doing it full-time. Why? You have to do it full-time. Like, you literally eat, sleep, and breathe real That's estate. Yeah. So, um, for me, some of the challenges that I've experienced, I am still two years in waiting on commission check that I had to sue a broker for that tried to, I had a, um, a deal kind of like, you know, with the one that you were talking about, we won't say the name because we want to keep integrity for the innocent. A lot of lawsuits. Yes. But what happened was this particular company, um, my broker at the time, I was going to rent I was finding a renter for that program. It was a lease to own. And she did not know how the program worked because our team leader at the time had just brought it into the, you know, for the team. She didn't really want us to talk to the broker about it because she knew she didn't, she wasn't going to understand it. So long story short, the husband and wife, which were the tenants that were going to lease their property, ended up getting into it. She bought a new, a new car. And they, we were literally about to like send the deposits and everything. So it was like, well, now I can't afford to pay a new car note and I'm having to pay this higher rent for this nice house that I wanted. And so he was like, I was going to, you know, get her a car later, but she still had three days to take the car back. She didn't want to do it. So I had told the broker, you know, what do you want me to do in this situation? She said, just still continue to show the property, blah, 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 blah. So we went to go do the walkthrough. I was supposed to go do the photos. And when I got there, the owner's still there. Now, I I will say before all of this happened, I was new to the transaction myself, never dealt with a rent-to-own situation. Um, and I was under the impression that the when the inspections were going to be done at the house, that the email that went out was going to go to myself, to the seller's agent, or the land that was representing the landlord, um, as well as my client, but it only went out to, it didn't go out to my client. So when the inspector came, 
she had no idea. And so she was startled, like like he came into the house because you know they have access with the with the super box. So she was startled and she, you know, basically was like, get out of my house. So he rescheduled it. She sent me an email. I want to know who's coming in my house, what time, you know, what, no problem. Yes, ma'am, my apologies. So when, you know, when we went to go do the walkthrough, she was still home. She wasn't supposed to be home. Heads were still inside, but we couldn't do the walkthrough. So I called the agent. The agent was like, well, your broker was supposed to be doing the walkthrough. And I had just talked with her, asking her if she wanted to come with me. She was like, you know, I gotta find my aunt, a place to stay, she's a border, she has to go. Just go ahead and handle it. So long story short, you know, we got into it because, you know, the transaction wasn't gonna go through. She didn't realize that, you know, my client was that company, not her, you know, family members. So she tried to get my commission. I ended up leaving her team because of something else. It was another, because I guess she didn't want me questioning her about another commission check. So she ended up, you know, she said that she gave it to another agent. Well, when we went to court, it was during COVID. So everything was online. So the judge was in my favor and she made one payment five hundred dollars to the lawyer and five hundred dollars to me and that was it. so i'm still disputing it you know it's hard to you know serve her because she has cameras at her house you know so we're gonna have to go through the truck fund so the truck fund is real this for situations like these so you know that's just one of my my stories i've I, i've had a lot i would we'll be here all night if i tell you even half of the things that i've been through but a lot of y'all know that know me have heard some of my stories and just know that it's not always easy but i love what i do i'm passionate about what i do and um you know that's what we're here for it's about the customer and making sure that they have a smile on their face at the end of the day so we will end with our contact information so you have three great realtors here that can help you with your services go ahead and give your information yes again my name is robert Fleming jr uh my ig is at houston home hero and do you want to leave your phone number oh yes my phone number is 832-782-7233 and I'm Monique Hoger. My Instagram is making moves with underscore Monique. Facebook, Moni Monique. And my phone number is 832-578-4021. I do work with insurance services. I also do international real estate. So if you need any of those things, I'm your girl. And last but not least, my name is Harry Joel Baptiste. You can find me on Instagram at Harry the House Hunter. Uh, phone number is 210-825-8128. Uh, one of the things I do work with a lot of patient clients and some patients who are finding good for product they from say, hit me up, let's find a new place for this day. That's right. And thank you, Elite Community Center. We're out here. And with this beautiful weather, if y'all hear some children in the background, it's because they are out there playing. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Ailey Community Center, for allowing us to share the real real estate with you. We look forward to seeing you soon, and thank you for watching.